Hello, our scientists. We're starting Unit 2, Week 4, looking at global warming and effects of global climate change. We're starting off with a graded discussion about the topic and do a little research in order to find out more information about global warming and why it's controversial. I have included a few resources here that may be helpful. A few of these are articles and a few of them are videos. So after you've done a little research and formulated your own opinions and your own thoughts, then go ahead and post to the discussion. Then continue to the next page so you can watch a couple of videos and you're going to be recording a little information in your online notebook. So these two songs will help you to have a better understanding about climate change and global warming. Usually the terms climate change and global warming are used interchangeably. They don't exactly mean the same thing. Global warming is referring to the warming and the increasing of Earth's temperature and climate change is referring to um, the global climate changing. However, the trend of um, the climate changing is a warming trend. So that's why you have them used interchangeably usually. So after you've watched those two videos, then go ahead and make sure you have a paragraph reflection in your lab notebook online about the topic. So here is what your notebook looks like, and you have your usual reflection paragraph at the top, and then you have um, a section where you're looking at two column notes and you're basically dispelling some of the misconception about climate change. So I have included um, in this particular unit a um, sort of like a PowerPoint um, infographic that is going to walk you through different people's misconceptions or very common misconceptions and the facts about them. So I have included a sort of summary statement about that misconception and then you're writing the facts. You're explaining what the science says about that particular topic. And then the last thing that you're going to be doing is at the very bottom and that is listing some of the different signs of climate change that you learn about through one of our interactives. So your learning targets this week are primarily focusing on climate and how Earth's global climate can change, what causes that change, and what kind of effects that we see as a result of the global climate change. These are your different climate categories, the carbon climate categories. So these were developed by a scientist who's of um, German and Russian descent. Um, sometimes it's, it's pronounced um, Copton instead of Coppen, but it just varies based on the source that you see. So there's different categories that are listed, and you can read through these topics that are listed here. And I have included a brief description about each of these different classifications. And then sometimes you see, as it's presented on a map here, for example, you see lowercase letters with it. So you have A through H to give you the major classifications. And then the lowercase letters just reflect seasonal variations within that. So that's why you sometimes see these um, second lowercase and third lowercase letters that are presented with the climate classifications. So when we're looking at weather versus climate, remember that weather is the day-to-day observations that you see. So today it's rainy and many days lately have been rainy. So it's raining today and it's 50 degrees. Well that's weather. And climate is going to be an average over a long period of time. So it's the observations that you have day to day over a long time and it's an average over that long period of time. So it's rainy and there's a rainbow. It's storming. That's weather. It's raining that's weather. It's snowing. That's weather. It's sunny and clear and pretty. That's weather. It's a nice, beautiful day outside. That's weather. And now your averages that are collected from observations and data that is collected um, using different types of scientific equipment to get an average over a long period of time is what gives you climate. So it's important to keep in mind the difference between those two, especially when we're looking at climate change. So a lot of people refer to climate change as um, something that is controversial because they don't understand what climate change is. So some people's misconceptions include thinking that volcanoes contribute to climate change or that the tilt of the earth is responsible for climate change 
or the sun is responsible. So we're going to look at some different misconceptions here from um, this document is from the Sea Grant, specifically Louisiana Sea Grant, and this has a lot of different common misconceptions and will help you to have a better understanding about those and to see the science behind them. So you're going to need your online lab notebook for this and you can open this up in um, a full view tab if you want to or you can just look through this. You can scroll downward as I'm doing and it's going to give you basically um, one misconception at a time and then gives you the facts about that so that you'll have a better understanding as well and can know how to better um, dispel those misconceptions that so many, so many people have as a result of just not understanding climate change. So greenhouse effect or greenhouse gases can be related to climate change. And so this is going to kind of show you how that those two are related. So greenhouse gases are gases that are produced and sort of trapped in the atmosphere and they are a result um, the majority of the time due to uh, human activities. Um, some of these are naturally produced, but an overabundance of them, an excess of these greenhouse gases are what is going to be leading to climate change as they get trapped in the atmosphere. So carbon dioxide is our primary greenhouse gas that's going to be related to climate change. We also have methane, um, nitrous oxide, we have some other um, small amounts of things that are in our atmosphere, but you can see our main contributor that we're focusing on is carbon dioxide. So the greenhouse effect is basically just saying um, that the Earth's atmosphere kind of acts like a greenhouse, and if you are familiar with what a greenhouse is, it's a structure that has glass around it to help trap in warmth um, so that plants can grow and they can have the proper humidity, and so this allows for Earth's atmosphere to act like a blanket trapping in carbon dioxide um, and the problem with the carbon dioxide is that human activities are putting way too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere something that the earth can't recover from as it normally would so here you have a little graph where you can see some information about the results of carbon dioxide being pumped into the atmosphere so um, this is telling you that for 650,000 years, atmospheric carbon dioxide has never been above this line. 1950s, when we start shooting up. So this is um, showing you that there's so much carbon dioxide in the air, so many parts per million of carbon dioxide in the air, that the Earth and the Earth's atmosphere can't recover from those extreme variations and those extreme numbers. So the last thing we're looking at is signs of climate change, and we're looking at this information through these two interactives. So you can click on this, and then you'll be using your online notebook and listing out the different effects that you read about through the two interactives. Make sure you click on the information and go through each of those different things in order to see what the different signs of climate change are. Urban heat islands are something that is problematic in increasing temperature in urban areas. So remember anytime you hear the word urban that's referring to a city. So you're going to be watching this video and learning a little bit about urban heat islands and how the temperature of an urban area can increase due to the different uh, impermeable and impervious surfaces that are going to be basically radiating out the heat that they trap. This last section is looking at how climate change is going to affect the ocean. So this is specifically focusing on ocean acidification and um, some questions that are posed based on ocean acidification and what can happen as a result of that, how climate change is affecting the ocean specifically. And looking at melting glaciers and what rising sea levels can do for our environment, can do for our cities, what types of results that they can cause. Your lab this week is looking at ocean acidification and you don't need any um, physical materials for this, you just need your computer. So make sure that you access the lab right here. This basically walks you through um, accessing your website here for ocean acidification and then you'll submit your lab report when you're finished. 
your unit two test is the last thing that you'll do after you've completed your studies this week. Make sure you study your vocabulary and your online notebooks in order to help you. Check out the diagrams and reading weather map as well. I've put together a Quizlet that can help you study some of those terms and questions. And then here is your test link. You can click on that when you are ready for your test. Please note that this is not going to be accepting responses until Wednesday. And this is a Google form, so it's not through Canvas. So after you've submitted your test, it'll be a couple days before you see your score, but you can actually see that presented as a fraction after you submit your test. So it'll tell you like, for example, 10 out of 12, right? Or 15 out of 20, correct? So it will have that for you after you submit your grade. So make sure you study before you take your test.